I'm here with uh, Ms. Kim Lee, the owner of The Forge in Birmingham, Alabama, which is a co-working uh, building, uh, very innovative and cool. Uh, so how did you, how did you get started with that, Kim? Well, do you want the short story or the long story? Give me the best <laughs> one. Give me the best one. <laughs> well, so... Um, I, I did not, I, this is not something that I had like been dreaming about for a long time. It just sort of happened, evolved over time. My undergrad is in business, but um, I graduated thinking that I would never use my undergrad degree. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed all my classes, but it's not where I thought I would be. Um, when I graduated, I went to seminary and got a master's in counseling and I really thought that I would be working like with juvenile delinquents or high school students in some way. Um, but then I couldn't get a job after I graduated. I had a real short window to get a job and get licensed because we thought we were moving out of the country. So I didn't have a lot of time to like look and get a job. So when my time frame passed, I just had to get a job. And I started working in a residential window washing and commercial cleaning company. And that our boss was just awesome. And he was very focused on hospitality, um, business as a service, treating everyone well, serving everyone well, employees, customers. And it was there that it was like, I actually like this business thing. And I worked in business operations and development. So I really helped grow the company. We had just added on the commercial cleaning side. And so got systems in place for window washing, commercial cleaning, and really helped set the company on a path to grow. Um, but then we moved back to Birmingham and, um, started a family. My husband's a pastor. We started a church. Uh, and so it was just kind of, I mean, it was crazy for a long time. And I never, I didn't know if I'd go back to work. I had no idea. But then when our youngest started in 4k, that was, and it was like, okay, I think that I can go back to work. <laughs> you know? Like everybody's sort of doing their thing and their place. And so, um, when I did that, I learned about co-working in other cities. And, um, and so then I was like, okay, this is very interesting. It's business as a service, hospitality centered, which I love. And um, we love community, building community, building ecosystems, like supporting the growth of a city, providing jobs for people. And so just slowly, it was a long process of research, visiting spaces, like, is this something I could do? And just slowly, um, the Lord just like, it was a lot of prayer because it was going from a very different, I mean, I was going basically from a stay at home mom to being a business owner, like full time, you know, so it was, it was a long process. Um, but then it was like, you know what, I think I could do this and do it really well and really love it. And so then we just slowly moved forward from there. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a unique <laughs> path to get there. Like, the, you know. <laughs> so, so tell me this, it, it seems like I might be ignorant of it, but it seems like that's, um, the space, uh, being an owner of a co-working space is a male dominant, um, industry. Is that, is that true? Is it, is it, or, or, or do you find other Kims like, you know, out there doing the same thing or is it, or is it rare? Um, it's very interesting. So I would say, um, that's a good question there. Um, okay. So I'll answer it in a different way. I'm a, I'm a part of a smaller group. I mean, I'm an independent operator, but I do like coaching and masterminds with a bunch of other co-working space owners. And so it is very typical that it is all women on these calls or like uh -huh. one guy. So in smaller in um, um, smaller operations, there are a lot of women in co-working, which is uh, pretty cool. And I think it's that hospitality, building community. But then when you get more corporate and the organizations are bigger, there's still, I mean, it's still commercial real estate. There's a lot of males, but um, a lot of independent operators, there are a lot of women in there. We're 
blazing a trail. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I knew like your, your place looks awesome. Uh, so Thanks. it seems like it has the right touch to a woman's touch. To it. <laughs> uh, well, I will. I can take no no credit there. It was a woman's touch for the design, but it was not my touch. Okay. <laughs> Well, from from doing this, is there any um, what would you say makes you makes your space unique? Like, what, what what's your unique selling proposition? Yeah, so I mean, I think we we definitely see our job as one hospitality first. Like, we want to provide an excellent service to our members, and we actually want to provide hospitality in such a way that our members don't even realize how great it is. Like they just come in, everything's ready. The coffee's there. It's clean. It's neat. And they just get what they need and go get to work. Um, And so we are very hospitality focused. We want our members to have a great experience, but we also see that we are only successful if our members businesses are successful. And so we want to provide a place that um, that they can come and really grow their business. So we are always looking for ways to connect people because we know that with connections and a community, that's going to help your business grow. We're always looking for ways to connect, to support, um, to provide education or um, have them meet other people. So I would say what sets this apart is we are just very focused on serving our members rather than just like ourselves. Like our goal is for them to be successful. Okay. Okay. I know you said you had went to uh, seminary and, and, and thought you were going to be doing a different path. Do you see this kind of like as your ministry uh, to, to, to your community? Yeah. I mean, um, we, when I first opened Forge, like my, like, you know, dream, whether or not, you know, I know it's kind of high in the sky, but I wanted Forge to be a place and have such an impact on the city that if we were plucked and gone, that the city would miss us. Like we have provided a place where people's businesses grow. As their businesses grow, they're able to hire more people. There's more money going into the city of Birmingham because we're here. And so it's definitely, um, a vision of having an impact and making the city better. Okay. And so, so now how long has it been since you, you've had um, the Forge? How long have you been in business? Yeah, so we opened September 2017. So we're at four and a half years. Okay, okay. Tell me this. First, what were some of the challenges in the beginning? And then what, was, what are some of the challenges, like your current challenges? Uh, are, are they the same? Okay. <laughs> That's a good question if they're the same. So at the beginning, we were really doing a lot of education. I mean, people just really did not even know what co-working was. So it's not like we opened up a coffee shop and people were like, oh, well, you sell coffee. We opened up a co-working space before there were really any other co-working spaces. There was the Innovation Depot, which is, you know, tech an incubator. So people knew the depot. So we would say, you know, we're kind of like innovation depot, but a little different, but it was still just a lot of education. So all of our marketing was really towards brand recognition and like talking about co-working. So that was a challenge in the beginning, just bringing something new to market, which, you know, People say, like, don't be the first, but don't be the last. (laughs) Um, So we did have a good and we have always had a great relationship with the depot, which has been really great. But, you know, people kind of got the depot. And so it kind of trickled down. So that was a challenge. Um, Now our challenge is. I think really all co-working spaces just work with a really small, lean team. It's just how the model works. And so as a business owner, like all these things that need to happen and what you want to do, and then trying to make that happen within our lean team while still serving well, um, you know, there's just a lot of things of running a business, whether it's co-working, coffee shop, shoe shop, consulting, you know, there's just lots of different branches and so really prioritizing how we spend our time and what we're doing to grow the business as well as nurture what we have here okay so during the pandemic um 
First, well, first of all, like, what, what was the challenges then? And then how did you guys pivot? Like, what did you guys change to kind of, you know, um, you know, keep going during that? Yeah. So the pandemic was a very big challenge. <laughs> we actually expanded on March 15th, 2020. We added 4,000 more square feet, square feet to our space. Um, And then March 16th is the day that nobody came to work. So our business model is based on density about, you know, having people in the space and we need a lot of people to make the space work. So that was a very big challenge because nobody came to work and we, um, we did not have to close because we are a mail distribution center. So we have mailing addresses. You can have virtual mail here. Um, so we were able to actually stay open and also because of our private offices, like it could be people's only place to work. So we were able to stay open, but really it was just people in the private offices who came. Our staff only came in a couple of days a week to sort mail and to clean, but all of our memberships, we changed immediately to virtual membership. So we cut their price and then we just tried to, facilitate online community, which, you know, was very different. And then in COVID, I think everybody at the beginning was, you know, it's like, well, what's going on? I don't know. It was kind of a novelty and we had interaction there, but then like that became life. And so by the time people were really getting Zoom fatigued and that community was, it was, our people were still there, but it was hard to get people on Zoom we were actually able to open back up. So that June, because we had so much space, (laughs) it actually allowed people to really spread out and feel safe being here. So we had so many cleaning standards and protocols and um, we put a lot of things in place to really change, to make sure that we were safe and clean and socially distanced and had directions for people and people felt really comfortable about the protocols. So it was a big, big change for us. And I think, you know, one of the things, you know, we had only been in business like just a little over two years. And so, you know, we still think back to before COVID and it's, it's, it's crazy to think that now we've been in business longer than we were before COVID because our space does look very different from before COVID. But, um, I think one of the biggest things we've learned is just, you know, we never thought we'd have to shift, you know, you always hear about pivoting in business, but never thought we'd have to shift like a co-working space, you know, people come in and use the space. That's just what it is. But just how agile we have to be. And if something works, we let, if something doesn't work, we let go of it much easier now. Like, okay, that's not working. What's going to work? And really trying to figure out what people actually need and what people will give their time for. Cause now people also just work very differently and show up very differently and want different events. So it's really caused us to laser focus in on, okay. Like one of the things we did before COVID, we had a lot of lunch and learns and there was a good attendance for those, but now it's like, okay, what are people, what do they really need? And it's really worth their time to come in and participate in that, you know? So it's just, it's caused us to be much more intentional and really um, focus in on what people need rather than just another good idea. We'll just try this and try this, so. Yeah, okay. So so what are you most proud of since, you know, as a business owner, what, what, <laughs> what accomplishments? What, that what, was not on my prepared <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, what am I most proud of? I, you know, I mean, I love it when we walk in or when people walk in and just are like, oh, so glad y'all are here. My business has grown or this has made me work so much better. Like that just makes our day. Um, so I'm really proud of the community and the place that we've provided that allows people's businesses to grow, allows them to feel better about where they're working. Um, and I'm also so proud of my staff right now. We have two on staff and we, I had one girl who was with me for four years and, um, 
when you work in a co-working space, there's a lot of hats and a lot of things that need to be done. And I just feel like I've gotten rock stars who just do an awesome job and take on all the different things and that come to them every day and just handle it really well. That's great. So, so what's your, what's your, um, what's your vision for the future as far as um, the forge? Yeah. So, I mean, I would love to open another space in Birmingham. I would love to open more than one space in Birmingham. So I'm always working towards that goal and um, looking for opportunities, looking for deals, looking for buildings. So that would be the first step. I think after we nail multiple locations here, then we could look at going outside of <clears throat> Birmingham. But I've, we've worked very hard to create systems and processes that are repeatable and we you know have handbooks so that we could just give it to our next location so but I think before we go outside of Birmingham we need to make sure they all work at other locations too you know so that would be the main thing is I would love to see more in Birmingham and then be able to grow from there okay I got one more question for you <laughs> I know you just so if you if you could talk to yourself like way back right before you did this if you could write yourself a letter what would you say like in that letter to yourself when you were on the on, on the verge of getting into this <laughs> that is a good question um that also was not on the list either was it <laughs> i'm just kidding i do better no i'm totally giving you a hard time i think well I will say this, which I'm sure people told me this, and it's something that I still struggle with, but things always go better if I let it go, is just um, to, to know your strengths and know your weaknesses and where your weaknesses are, hire people for that, and then to let go of stuff. Like if you, if you give a task to somebody, <laughs> then let them do the task and really try to delegate instead of, I have the tendency to just say, oh, well, I'll just do that. I'll just do that. I can take care of that. Um, and to really give ownership to other people and let other people do it. Because when I'm in all the day-to-day -day mundane things, then I'm not working on growing the business. I'm just working on keeping us going. So I haven't really um, built something that can grow and go without me. It's just me. It's not a business. So really being able to let things go and let people do the jobs that you hire them for. Or, you know, when I hold on to things, I'm not letting people do their job. Um, so that would, that's my advice that I still try to tell myself. <laughs> it's great. It's great. But I, think, I mean, I think entrepreneurs, small business owners all struggle with that because the, typically the personality is like, you think you can do it. And so that's why we start something because yeah. we think we can do it. And and we are used to taking on challenges and just figuring it out. And, and most of the time, we're pretty good at figuring out most things, which is, you know, why we get past six months. <laughs> um, but, you, but if you don't give things away and let other people do the work, then you're just only as big as yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So Kim, tell me, tell me about what you got, what you have available right now. If somebody's looking for a space or... Or, or looking for yeah. um, uh, to connect with the community. Kind of tell me what you got available now yeah. and how to get in contact with you. Okay, oh. so in, in case y'all don't know, we are located at the Pazitz building, downtown Birmingham. So we're right above the food hall, which is awesome because there's great food downstairs. <laughs> but we have, uh, we really have three main ways that you can join Forge. So we have open co-working, which is just open seating, first come, first serve. We have dedicated desks if you want just a little bit more permanency. So you can leave your computer, all your stuff, you have lockable storage. And then we also have private offices. Our private offices right now are full. They're very popular. So, um, but, you know, it's always worth coming and seeing a lot of times people come and are like, Oh, well, the, I never thought about co-working or I never thought about a desk, but that is a good fit too. So those are the three main membership types. And we also have conference rooms. So you don't have to be a member to reserve our conference rooms. It's very easy. You just 
go to our website, work at forge.com and there's a book a room button. So um, we love to host people. People have great meetings here. Um, and then I was going to say, oh, but then we also try to do things to engage our local business community. So if you, um, so um, where you and I met in person, we have a networking event every Tuesday, every second Tuesday of the month. It's in the morning, it's breakfast. And it's just a great way to get to know other business owners or business leaders in our city. So it's been a great time for people to connect and build relationships. I mean, there was a guy who was there two months ago and he was brand new to the city. He was a member at Forge and then a financial planner came. It was her first time there. She's not a member at Forge and now he's her financial planner. So it's like, you just never know. It's been great to meet people in all different industries, but we also do, um, we'll do lunch and learns. So it's great to follow us on social media. We're just work at Forge everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, um, just to keep up with our events, because just, we want, we want anybody to be able to participate in the things that we're doing. We want to grow businesses and that goes beyond just our members. So we try to do things that um, provide education and resources for business owners. And, um, and, and, you know, if you're thinking about being a business owner or you want to make your work better, we're always trying to think of and provide education that will help you grow. So, hey, sounds great. I uh, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. To meet you. All right. Hey, this is so great. Thank you. <laughs>